Hey everyone, my name's Josh from the channel Josh Richens Producer here on YouTube, but today I'm at Weiss Advice. Make sure you check out the website weissadvice.com. Now I'm a really big fan of the channel Corridor Digital and they do a series called VFX Artists React where a bunch of VFX artists will sit down and watch back clips of movies and various other media and they'll give their professional take on how they think some of the virtual effects might have been done or they'll just generally use it as a talking point. And so I thought maybe I could do the same thing as an audio engineer and today I'm going to be reacting to the live recording of Many Times by Dion. Now this video is going to sit somewhere in between a react and a breakdown as I've actually done my own little 16 bar cover of the song and so I'll break down some of the techniques that were inspired by things I picked up on in this video. Now this live recording of many times comes from the live album Absolutely and that also has its own video on YouTube and I highly recommend you go and check that out as it's a really incredible piece of art and it's also where I did a lot of my snooping or audio detective work I guess you could say and so I'm going to reference that video quite a lot as well. Now I'm also going to do this video in two parts. So for the first part I'm going to be talking about the vocals and the guitars and for the second part I'm going to be talking about the bass and the drums. So I'm going to play you a little bit of the song then I'll play a little bit of my 16 bar cover and then we'll start breaking down some of the vocals and the guitars. So here's the song Many Times by Dion. And now, here's my 16 bar cover of Dion's Many Times. I'm going to start off by talking about the vocals. So I'm going to play a little bit of the start of the track where there's not a lot else going on and it's a bit easier to hear. <laughs> There you go again, head low, putting on a show again. It's the holidays that come it always in this way. You can take the pressure off me just to put it on. Talking in the brain is on the phone, airing out to the doctor. Man, is this vocal astounding. Um, I'm going to put it out there right now. He's drunk. Uh, I would be willing to bet on it, as he said in interviews that he was drunk for other songs that were recorded at what seems to be the same session. So I'm pretty sure that he is drunk and he has been hammering this song. And it kind of reminds me of that famous old story about the John Lennon vocal from Twist and Shout. Uh, nonetheless, an astounding vocal. There's a real rawness and energy to it that like just serious energy. Listen to this next line here where he starts just kind of like riffing on these different ideas, but like somehow it all comes together and has this like really cohesive emotion to it. Man, awesome stuff. I want to talk about how this vocal was recorded though, and I found an interview that Dion did for Reverb where he says that the sound of this album is an omnidirectional pickup pattern. I will admit though that that article isn't very clear as to whether he is directly talking about this live session or whether he's talking about the studio versions of the same songs. Nonetheless, if you're like me and you watch stuff trying to dissect how it was all done or put together, you might have asked yourself, where's his vocal mic? And I think there's a pretty simple answer for this. I think it's dubbed. For this take in particular, I think that they've dubbed his vocal over the top and they've probably done it like directly afterwards, probably in the, or at least in the same session, uh, because his vocal sounds so close to what is going on. And there are so many other recordings where it's obviously not dubbed and you can hear that his voice is that same thing. It's that like raspy beat up been singing for ages voice. And there's a really good example of that in the entire video for Absolutely. So I want you to check this moment here out. Listen to the sound of the vocal. And if you've got headphones or a good set of speakers, I really want you to listen to where that vocal is coming from in the stereo spectrum. Are you in, are you in, are you in, I 
So you can see that there are songs where it's obviously not dubbed. That's so super cool. And I think the person that did mix this is Andrew Salo, who has worked with Bon Iver, Maggie Rogers, and even The Roots. Um, and that's one thing that I wanted to bring up is this just looks like a room of friends all jamming together. It is a dream team of producers, just absolutely next level musicians and producers all in the room together. Um, but we'll get to that as the instruments come up one by one. So I'm going to come back to the recording for many times now. And one of the things that was really interesting in that interview that I read was that Dion apparently said that the album was uh, an amalgamation of different sessions where everything was kind of built up and put together. I'm almost certain that they're probably talking about the studio versions and not this version here. But that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if they had done a whole bunch of different takes and put together different layers. In fact, I'm almost certain that the way that this is done is that they've done a bunch of different takes to start with to see which one is the best. And you can kind of tell that from the camera angles is there's this camera angle that we start with right in front of Dion's face. Uh, and there's a few later on in the in this video where he's obviously wearing the camera behind him and there's a few where he's obviously wearing the camera in front of him with what's called a uh, drunk camera mount. It's basically a camera mount that clips to your body and comes out so that it kind of locks onto your face and it's that classic like movie look where uh, someone's drunk and the camera's like swaying around with them. So that being said, if we have a listen to this vocal, I think you can actually hear in the background that there's not only McGee, the guitarist, another legendary producer, um, singing along with Dion in the background, but there's also Dion singing along with Dion in the back background. And that's why I'm pretty sure that this would have been dubbed after the fact. And they talk about the fact that the AKG C414 was one of the instrumental microphones that they used in Omni to record this album. Again, I'm still not sure if they mean the live version or the... Um, or the studio version, but I'd be willing to believe that if they did dub this after the fact, they did it with one of the many AKGs that you see in this shot. And I did actually see, I think in another interview, Dion talk about his uh, vocal sound basically just being an AKG C414 set to Omni going into a Heritage 1073 style preamp. Now, talking about McGee, I think that's actually a really nice segue to talk about guitars. And so McGee is one of the guitarists in this video, and he is holding that red guitar that you see in the very first shot that I'm going to come back to right here. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea what this guitar is. I spent a really, really long time trying to figure out what this guitar is, and I even sent it to owners of music stores and guitar collectors, asking them if they had any idea. So if you know, please let me know in the comments. I have two guesses. Either it's a vintage body that's had a Telecaster neck put on it, or it's a custom build. Uh, and I think I'm leaning towards custom build. As you can see from this first shot here that it's got a whole bunch of really intriguing contours up on the uh, upper horn and the forearm contour as well uh, that I wouldn't expect from a vintage instrument like this. That being said, if it's a boutique instrument, it's vintage inspired all the way. So let's play a little bit of this start section and talk about this guitar tone. <laughs> there you go again, and hello, putting on a show again. Right, so we get a really nice little clear section there that's going to make it easier to figure some of this stuff out. One of the things that I notice right off the bat is that that's a Roland, either JC40 or JC120 sitting behind them. I, I don't remember if it was the JC40 or 60. I think it was a 40 and then it went up to 120. There might have been a 60 model in there. Uh, either way, it's a Roland Jazz Chorus. So I saw that and I thought to myself, well, I've got a jazz chorus emulation in THU, so why don't we uh, pull that up and have a go? And so I grabbed my trusty Jazz Master. Now, I think this is a point that's appropriate to point out. These are not P90 pickups. Uh, P90 pickups were originally made by Gibson, and they were made completely differently to the way that Fender made pickups. Fender made predominantly single coil pickups. Uh, and Jazz Master pickups are just a Fender single coil pickup that is wound extra fat, and extra thin and that's what gives them their really bright kind of bubbly tone nonetheless this is my kind of main guitar and so I thought I'd plug it up chuck it into the jazz chorus and we'd see if we could kind of figure out a little bit of what's going on so here's the tone starting off with my jazz master I'm on the bridge pickup 
And I've got my tone rolled back just a little bit as this is a particularly bright guitar and the P90s aren't as bright as Jazzmaster pickups. So this is the sound right off the bat. It's very nasally and it's pretty crunchy, but the reason that I've done that is because that nasal tone kind of helped and the extra gain kind of just acted as compression when you're playing everything kind of like... You can see that doesn't really sound like a dirty amp so much. So I thought I'd try and figure out how this guitar part was played as that was gonna kind of hint to the sounds that could have been used. And I think that that's the first clue to my biggest takeaway from this, which is that the sounds that you start with are going to really influence the song. And I'm willing to bet that this part sounds the way that it does because of the guitar that McGee is using and the way he's playing that guitar. Let me show you what I mean. I couldn't find any tabs or anything for this song and so I kind of just listened and tried to pick out notes and what I ended up kind of coming up with was this little progression. Right, pretty clunky. That was pretty close, let me show you. <laughs> there you go again, hello, putting on the show. Now here's my version with the Jazz Master and the Jazz Chorus emulation. So much jazz. So it's kind of close. There's similar notes in there and that's mostly how I figured out what was going on by just trying to listen out for notes, pick them up on my guitar. And so this is where I ended up. It's nothing like perfect, but you can tell that the tone is pretty well off. And if we come back over to the video and pay close attention to what's going on here, you can actually see that this fourth string is the same color as the first three strings and not the next two. So he's got a wound fourth on the guitar and that's because it's a baritone guitar. He's talked about it in his setup before. He normally plays a Jaguar, so pretty close to the kind of jazz master sound if I had this set up as a baritone. Um, but in this case, he's got this mystery P90 guitar with the rocker switches that just looks heinously cool. So I grabbed my Ibanez hollow body, which is set up as a baritone guitar. And I basically just did the same stuff. We've got the jazz chorus emulation. This time I did have a little bit of drive beforehand because I, I wanted that kind of like low end cut that you get from the tube nine, given how much low end I was getting out of the baritone. Um, and I wanted, like I said before, that kind of drive that makes it like hot. But when you're finger picking everything, you can still get like a clean tone out of it. Still nicely clean. So once again, I just tried for the, to listen for the notes and figure out how it was played. And I still don't think I've got it exact, but with the baritone, I ended up with this progression. And in the choruses, it's just a rearranging of those same, uh, those same chords. So it's... And so with all of that, I ended up a lot closer. Once more, the guitar from many times. There you go again, hello, putting on a show. And now my baritone version. So those are some super awesome guitar tracks there from McGee. Uh, also worth mentioning, McGee is another legendary producer and musician in his own right who's worked with the likes of Omar Apollo, The Kid Leroy, and even Drake. Now, as we move into the chorus, we get a second layer of guitars. And let me play a little bit of that for you now. So you can hear there in the second half of that chorus, we get that extra guitar layer over the top. And off to the very side of this shot here, we've got a gentleman holding a Stratocaster. I don't think there's any funny stuff going on with this Strat either. I think it's just a standard tuned Stratocaster. The gentleman is Ryan Richter and it was harder to find Ryan's credits, but he's worked with Blake Mills before and I think he might even be a luthier. So just heinously cool stuff. Now he's playing this Stratocaster and from what I gathered, it's a parts caster that he put together himself. And he's got this kind of like interesting tone going on. Um, as far as amps go, there's a fair few Roland jazz choruses in the room, but 
looking through the rest of the video, I did notice a tweed amplifier. I couldn't quite make out what it was, but I don't think it was a, uh, a, a boutique kind of tweed thing or anything like that. I think it was a Fender. And so for this second guitar tone, for this chorus layer, I've used a few different plugins. Here I've got Amp Hub with a compressor to start with, and we're going into the, the Fender Bassman emulation. Uh, and funnily enough, Amp Hub doesn't have a Fender Bassman cab in it. Kind of weird. Not entirely necessary, but I thought it was fun to try and keep it authentic. And so I've used Slate. You can see I was auditioning cabs here. I ended up going with this impulse response here for my cabinet, and it's really interesting. So this impulse response is from Own Hammer, and it's based on a Tyler Amp Works 10 plus 12 open back cab. So kind of a more boutique tweed styled cabinet, but if my memory serves me correctly, those old basements were four by tens most of the time. Uh, and so kind of cool, a little bit more authentic I found, and I liked this sound for that tweed basement sound. Now, my last plug in here is a uh, reverb. And that's just because that there's so much room in the recording that they had that the, the tone just didn't feel very close. I think that they're probably just using like a close capture for McGee's guitar tone, but for Ryan's, I think that there's a lot of like room bleed for that guitar tone. What I ended up with sounded like this. Again, I don't think it's exact. I'm pretty sure I've got that first chord right, but that little lick at the end is kind of hard to hear in the mix, so I've got some simple version of it just here. Uh, and I think this might be a little bit spicy just off the bat, so I might just turn the volume back on this um, compressor just here. We'll see what we get. Yeah, I like that, that's a bit closer. So with our baritone guitar, we get this. Really cool stuff. None of these things are particularly difficult on their own, but together they come together to make something really nice. And I think that's an awesome lesson. That's something that I've heard from Kenny Beats um, is an idea where you, a whole bunch of really simple things come together to make something really complex and beautiful. And actually in science, the idea is called emergence. It's the idea that something can have a trait that uh, its parts doesn't have. So that's all for part one of this video. And if you want to catch part two, where I break down the bass and the drums, make sure you subscribe. And if you liked the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up as it really does help the channel. Also check out wiseadvice.com. Matt has a whole bunch of different courses on offer. And remember, we are musicians. Sound is our instrument. I'll catch you next time.